I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, gotta catch them all. Well, we can finally do that. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy, Vitamin M, coming at you with another episode of Pokemon Silver here. And today is going to be a really big episode, as we can finally start catching some Pokemon. And as soon as we get on the route here, this guy will finally want to talk to us. I've seen you a couple times. How many Pokemon have you caught? Would you like me to show you how to catch Pokemon? Sure, you know. Show this off to you guys here. So he's going to find a wild Pokemon here, but this is really this episode where I'm going to be covering how to catch Pokemon here. So Wild Rattata appeared, and yes, the text is slow. This is auto. I can't do anything about it. But basically, he's going to go into his pack here and go to the, the ball slot, or the ball part of the pack, and throw a Pokeball. Whoa, he caught it! It's not that easy, actually, unfortunately. So there's a lot of different catch rates for different Pokemon depending on how it is, but it's basically a ratio out of, I believe, 256 or 265, something, a number such as that. But I'll go in a little bit more detail here. That's how you do it. If you weaken them first, Pokemon are easier to catch. So like he's saying there, we can try to weaken a Pokemon by damaging it or giving it a special condition such as poison, paralysis, sleep and lowering its stats, and it'll make it easier to catch. This is going to come in handy for some of the more rare Pokemon that you might want to add to your team, or just collect for the sake of adding more to your Pokédex here. So, now that we have some Pokéballs here, we can go into the Wild Grass, and we have the option of just fighting for training, or we can actually catch Pokemon here. So I might catch this Sentret here, but um, I might actually pass up on this, I don't know. But we'll just see what happens. I do want to do some training though with Cyndaquil here. But now that we can catch some Pokemon here, I finally want to get to go over the Pokemon that are available to us now on the routes that we're going to be coming across here. So, this is our third time going through Route 29 here essentially. So, Critical Hit, come on. Oh, I never explained Critical Hit. So there is a chance that Critical Hits will happen and depending on which move it is, some moves are going to be more prone to causing a Critical Hit than others. Uh, basically, it just does double damage, and if it's super effective on a Pokemon, it does times two, and if you do typically times four or so, times eight, and so on and so forth with that. So just keep that in mind as you're going about things here. But got some Sentrus to train off here, level two, this is going to be easy. But I did want to go over the Pokemon that we can now find, and I'm sure you guys have already seen a lot of these Pokemon on this round in particular with me going over this. So first off is Sentret here, as you can see. Sentret is a normal type introduced in this game. Uh, he's okay. His fully evolved form is just really fast. It can hit kind of hard, but it doesn't really get a whole lot of versatility with different things. It's not the best, but it can be a good HM slave. HMs are going to be some hidden moves that you can use in the overworld, but I'll be getting into much more detail on those much later. Uh, another Pokemon we can come across, as you've already seen, is Pidgey. Pidgey is a normal flying type um, that is encountered during the day. Now, the day-night mechanic does affect which Pokemon show up. Sentret will only show up during the day, so that's something to keep in mind. And daytime is divided between morning and day. So morning starts at 4 a.m. and goes to 9.59 a.m. And then day starts at 10 o'clock, goes to 5.59, and then night kicks in from 6 to 3.59 just so you guys are aware of that. But anyways, back to Pidgey here. Pidgey is kind of a mediocre flying-type Pokemon. I've definitely used a Pidgey before, and it's okay. I uh, used it in Soul Silver, unfortunately, and I really do regret that, but flying-types are going to be really handy to use an HM move much later on that will allow you to move around the map much quicker. Pidgey is one that, you know, I kind of do recommend if you do want to give him a try, but he's definitely not the best flying-type. And flying-types can be really good at being dual types with some other things that will give you some more options. Um, but Pidgey's okay. Uh, third on the list is Hoot Hoot, and you've obviously seen him at night. Hoot Hoot is one of those Pokemon that does not benefit from not having this physical special split quite yet, because in its fully evolved stage, it has a lot of special attack and a lot of HP, but Flying and normal doesn't really help it out with its normal and flying type moves since those are physical. So you're in order to get the best out of its special attack, it's going to be learning some psychic moves and different things such as that, which is kind of a bummer. However, it does get some really nice support moves such as Reflect and some other things that you can come across. And finally, the last Pokemon that is only available in Crystal version on this part of the game is Hopip. 
Hopip is a grass flying type. It is able to do a lot more of the special conditions that grass types are known for. So if you wanted a grass type that does that but weren't so pleased with Chikorita, Hopip is going to be a good choice. The problem with it is it's really fast, but it can't hit that hard. And it just doesn't have the strategy that it does in later games, because U-turn and some other turn, some other moves like that don't quite exist. So in later games, you could use U-turn, you could use Sleep Powder and then U-turn, and then get another Pokemon out there for free to attack whatever you were fighting. So that's just something to keep in mind. Hopip isn't that fantastic in this game, though. It can really only get normal and grass type moves to attack, but it's a normal flying type, which is quite a move. And here we are in Route 46 here, in another area here. This is actually going to be the end of another area that we'll get to eventually. And we come across a new Pokemon here, Geodude. So Geodude is a ground rock type here, which rock is going to be resilience against normal moves, so I'm not even going to bother with him. But Geodude is actually a really, really good Pokemon if you can get it to its final form of Golem. Now, there are some Pokemon that can only evolve if you trade them, and in this game started the held items could affect which Pokemon they evolve into, and different things such as that. So, with that in mind, um, just keep that in mind as you're training a Geodude. You will have to trade him in order to get into his fully evolved form, but his second form, I've used him in Generation 1, he's not awful. But what else is on? He's actually a very, very good Pokemon. Very defensive, he can hit pretty hard. Rock types and ground types tend to be pretty slow, and it does have a quad weakness to water and grass. So that typing just isn't that great, and the ability abilities don't even exist in this game, period, and the ability of Sturdy doesn't even exist. So if it gets hit by a water move, it's pretty much done, let's say. Uh, what else is on that route? There's also Spearow. So Spearow is a f normal flying type. It is much better than Pidgey, I would say. It's more attackative, it's a little faster, and it definitely gets some better moves, such as Drill Pet. So that's definitely a really nice one to have. Over the two, Spearow's your guy, for sure. Uh, and then finally, no, 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 there's two more. So, during the daytime, you can only come across Jigglypuff. Yes, the singing puffball that everybody just loves from Smash Bros. You can come across Jigglypuff there, and Jigglypuff is okay. It starts to get some better moves in this game, such as Rollout and some different things, but you are going to need an item to eventually evolve it. It's okay. I would pass up on it. There are some better normal types, and if you are wondering, Fairy type doesn't exist in this game, so it's just a pure normal type. And the last Pokemon on that route is going to be Fanfi. That is only available to Crystal version. Fanfi is a pure ground type that is pretty defensive. It can, it's a little slow, but it can hit pretty hard. And, you know, it's a pretty good Pokemon. I have never used it. I've thought of using it, but it can be pretty good. But that's only available to you during the morning in... Um, Pokemon Crystal version at that point in the game. So, we got our Pokeballs, and we were all healed up, and now we're headed to this next route here, on Route 30. Now this is where a lot more Pokemon are going to be available to us. So first up on the list is the Weedle family here. This is going to be the second evolution of Kakuna here. So Weedle is a bug poison type that is... it's pretty meh. Him and Caterpie, their line are really worth passing up on, but they're, if you really want to go for it, I'm not going to stop you. But Bug Poison, it can really inflict a lot of different damage, or um, excuse me, special conditions, especially with Poison. Um, but it's just really not that great. Bug types like those guys, they tend to evolve pretty early, and they're pretty strong in the early game, but as you go on, they're really not the best ones to have. There are some better Bug type moves, or some better Bug type Pokemon for sure, but that's something to keep your eye about. Uh, a note, if you want to catch something from Weedle or Caterpie in that family, don't catch Kakuna or Metapod. Make sure you catch a Caterpie or a Weedle, that way you can train it and get it to evolve, because if you just catch Metapod or Kakuna, it will only know Harden, and it won't be able to attack. So that just makes it a little harder. Caterpie is just a pure bug type, uh, where it evolves eventually into Butterfree, and it'll get some psychic moves. It's okay, it's worth passing up on. But here we have another, we've got a, this mechanic here that I, wanted, that I want to start talking about here. So, I'm sure some of you are very aware that in between the different Pokemon games, there are Pokemon exclusive to the different versions. One of those is Ledabot and Spinarak. So Ledabot here is a bug flying type, 
it's really not that good. It's worth passing up on. It's more of a support Pokemon by knowing Light Screen, Reflect, Safeguard. It's really not worth it. You can only get it at the morning time here in Silver, and at night time in Gold version, you can actually get Spinarak. So that's actually pretty cool. Spinarak is a bug poison type. It's a little bit slower, but it can hit pretty hard, I guess so, so to say. And it gets its signature move, Spider Web, which just allows the Pokemon it's fighting not to escape. But it's okay. Um, it's definitely one of the better bug types, but it's not fantastic. But that's just something to keep in mind there. Yeah, and then obviously you can encounter Hoot Hoot and Hop Hop, or uh, Hop Hop. <laughs> hop up in this one here too. Uh, when fighting Weedle, watch out for Poison Sting here. But in Crystal, in this on this one, at nighttime you can encounter Zubat. Zubat is a poison flying type, which is definitely one of the better poison types. Even though it can't quite get uh, one of the better poison moves in this game for sure, unfortunately. However, its final stage of Crobat is one of is the fastest Pokemon in Generation Two. It's not the fastest Pokemon, period, but in Generation 2 Pokemon, it's the fastest one. And it can hit pretty hard, so it's definitely worth considering for your team. The only thing is, it will be hard to get to it with a Friendship Evolution, which I'll be going in more detail on Friendship later on. So that's just something to keep in mind there. And, uh, oh gosh, Cocoon as a Metapods are so nice to train with. So, yeah, and then the final Pokemon on this route that you can counter at nighttime, only in Crystal version at this point in the game, is Poliwag, which is a pure water type, which you're going to need a Water Stone to get to its uh, eventual f evolutionary form. Uh, it's a pretty good one, honestly. It's really not too bad. It is actually really, really nice. Its final form eventually becomes a Water Fighting type, and Fighting type moves are kind of scarce in this game, especially the TMs just don't help them out. And if it's one type you really do want to have in this game, it is a fighting type, I would say. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, with that, move on. I think this guy's kind of looking at me funny, but let's see what this guy has to say. Everyone's having fun battling. You should too. Okay, well, alright. Well, onwards. I just lost. I'm trying to find more Pokemon. Wait, you look weak. Come on, let's battle. Okay, yeah, I know I lost the first battle, but give me a break. Alright. Our first regular battle, Youngster Joey wants to battle. And what a better thing to start with than Rattata. So this is a trainer battle you have to fight. You cannot escape from these, period. And it's just like a regular battle like we fought against Vitamin P, you know, in the last episode. So, with that in mind, we're just kind of whittling him down here. Uh, you can use different items and different things such as, such as I've gone through. Uh, yeah, battles are where you're going to be getting your EXP, obviously. I think going forward, I'm going to be fast-forwarding through all of the battles. Um, really not the important ones. If something important happens during a battle, I'll probably slow down and show it to you guys, or explain it if something's new. So we won. Ah, uh, I don't have any more Pokémon! But I remember we got 64 Poké Dollars for winning. Sent some to Mom. So because we allowed our Mom to save some money, that will give her a portion of that to her, and that kind of stockpiles in their our bank account quote unquote with her and she will be able to buy some things later on if you get a certain amount. Okay, so this looks like this is the guy that he fought earlier. You're a Pokemon trainer, right? Then you have to battle. You can't make me do anything. Alright, we got another youngster here. Youngster Mikey. Mikey. <laughs> right. What a name. That's pretty good. So he's gonna start with a Pidgey here. So that's not gonna be too bad. I kind of want to show you guys battling here for a little bit, and then eventually I'll be skipping ahead with them. But yeah, so you have a lot of choices when it comes to the Pokemon you can add to your team by this point in the game. So that's just something you do really want to keep in mind. Um, you know, Bulbapedia is a really great resource for checking out Pokemon stats, their moves that they can learn in this generation. I use it a lot, all the time. Uh, just to kind of help me set up my teams or anything. So, I guess shameless plug for those guys. But Yeah, so that is that. So we beat him. And I think, uh, oh, okay. Sure. I don't want to deal with you, so I'll, I'll just go away here. Okay, I just want to get out of the grass here. Got away safely, nice. Okay, so... 
she's not a trainer. I'm not a trainer, but if you look one in the eyes, prepare for battle. So, with that in mind, with this new advice found, watch out for people looking in the eye. They could give you a weird look or something, but anyways, that's kind of getting into the details on our adventure here as we start battling and kind of coming across some of the Pokemon that we can catch here. But, next time on Pokemon Silver, we're going to be going north on this route and seeing what's up ahead. And, you know, we're going to be trying to see what other Pokemon's available to us as we train our Cyndaquil. We're going to make our way to Violet City to take on the first gym eventually. So, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Vitamin M, I'm out, dudes. <laughs>